Hey everybody, it's Whipray, and today I'm here to do another Empyrean Galactic Survival video on how to set up a dedicated server. Um, very recently they went from alpha version 2.1 or 2.2 to alpha version 4.1 or 4.2. And in either case, what they did, which was a very dramatic departure from past uh, dedicated server things, was that they actually added a separate client altogether for launching and running a dedicated server. Um, I'm going to walk through how you can go through and set that up because it's a little bit different than previous ones. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you are going to want to launch Steam. And then in Steam, you're going to want to go to Library. Now, normally, um, it just defaults to your Games tab. As you can see here, I've got all my other games and stuff like that in here. This is not where you need to go to install the dedicated client because uh, now it's actually a separate program that you have to install. Instead, you need to go to Library and you need to go over to Software. Or not software, I'm sorry. You need to go over to blah, 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 blah. Uh, should be tools. There we go. So in tools, you have a list of all kinds of little uh, servers and stuff like that for all sorts of different games. Now, the thing you want to look for is specifically is Empyrean Galactic Survival Dedicated Server. In my case, I favorited it, so it's at the top of the list. Once you're there, you're going to go... I already have it installed, so it says play game, but you're going to want to right-click on it and install the... Uh, application and then steam will go ahead and download it and install it for you once that's done you need to in order to access the folder you can either navigate there manually it's located in your steam uh, apps there we go so we're going to go over to our raid array which is where i have all my games installed steam steam apps uh common and you will see empyrean dedicated server dedicate empyrean dedicated server as opposed to galactic survival this is where you're going to be doing most of your work. Uh, instead of doing that, alternatively, what you can do is you can right-click on, in the library when you're under Tools, you can right-click on the Empyrean Dedicated Server, go to Properties, go over to Local Files, and go over to Browse Local Files. And that'll get you to the same spot. So once you're in here, uh, what you're going to want to do is it's mostly still the same format that it was before. You're going to have the dedicated.yaml, you're going to have the Empyrean Dedicated Batch File, the actual Empyrean Dedicated Software, and all that other jazz, and the Launcher. Um, some things have changed, though, because of this. Um, you can no longer just straight run the Imperial dedicated batch file, because when you do that, at least in my case, after a couple seconds, you'll get a couple of these internal uh, exceptions popping up. Um, and essentially, that's, uh, from what I've been able to gather, that is a version of copy protection that Windows has built into it, and that uh, is interacting not nicely with the stuff that Imperial has. And so essentially, it doesn't launch the server. So what you need to do is, A, make sure that the damn thing is not running at all. So we're going to pull up Task Manager, and we are going to make sure, and Task, to kill it, make sure we don't have any processes for it running anymore. Otherwise, it's not going to want to run at all, which we don't. So, in either case, so in here, you, know, you don't want to run that. What you're going to want to do is you're going to actually run it through Steam, because you can just play a game, and that will launch the client for you. Um, however, before we do that, what we need to do is we need to go back in there and we're still going to have the dedicated.yaml file, um, and we're still going to have the Imperium dedicated command thing. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go over to dedicated.yaml and you're going to probably want to make a backup of it, which is why it's, so you have a copy of the original because when you start editing it, it, if you want to revert to defaults or something like that, it's going to be a pain in the butt to do. So make a copy of it, back it up, and then work on the one. So we're going to edit this with uh, either your Notepad++, your Notepad, whatever basic text editor that you use. And so we're going to open it up. And as you can see here, um, this is what mine is kind of pre-configured to. And um, so in here, it will... Yeah. So this is the one dedicated thing, and it does mention to add in on that batch file that I pointed out earlier, um, that little bit of command right there. But essentially, um, it will look... Uh, here's the original, actually. So this is what it'll look like originally. Most of the stuff will be commented out as denoted by these pound symbols or hashtag, depending on, you know, how old I want to be making myself feel. Um, but most of this will be uh, commented out. If it's commented out, that means the uh, the configuration thing is not going to look at it, which means it's not going to get applied. So if you want to have a server password, you're going to have to make sure that you uncomment this section. And as you can see here, you need to make sure that all of these things line up. Now there's approximately one, two, three, four, four spaces between the leftmost section of this file 
and the first bit of text. And you have to make sure everything is in line because if it's not in line, it's going to error out and it's going to crash the dedicated server as soon as it tries to start up. And you can actually see this in the logs and tell you that there's a problem with the configuration file. Um, but in any case, we're just going to go through it. Um, this is what the original looks like. This is what I'm running with right now. Um, so server port, leave it at default 30,000. Um, server name, whatever you want it to be. It can have funky characters and all that jazz. It really doesn't care. Try to be sure to set a server password because that's usually important. By default, it's ABC, but by, for the love of God, just don't leave it at that. Do something with it. Um, and if anyone's wondering, I am changing my password on my dedicated server to something else so that, you know, I don't have to worry about people being crazy. <clears throat> max players is how many max players are on the server at any given time. Depending on what your server is capable of doing, either if you're renting one or if you're running your own, um, unless you've got like a relatively beefy server, don't set that too high because it can really affect gameplay. Um, if you have too many people in there, you can lag things out. Um, server reserve play fields is how many play fields the server keeps in reserve. So if we have like four people on four planets, it'll load it in four planets and I'll keep two sections just in reserve that I can quickly load things into to prevent downtimes when loading between areas. Um, over here we have the server description and it's very kind to tell you exactly how long 127 characters is. Um, in mine, I have some special characters like commas, exclamation marks, and at symbols. Um, but you can just put it wherever you want to, but just make sure it stays within that limitation of how long it can be. Um, over here, it gives you some more options you can enable or disable. I purposely have left off, uh, I've left commented out this section where all plate field servers will be automatically stopped every X amount of real time hours. Um, that's mostly, I would imagine, for like maintenance and stuff like that, or maintenance to make sure that the server doesn't run too long. Um, I left this coming out because on my servers, they're only up when I'm actually playing and recording, so it's not that big of a deal for me. Um, if you are renting a server, um, this will be the area where you can tell net into the server to configure things. Um, I'm able to configure the text file because I'm directly running the program on my machine that I have physical access to. If you're doing anything like a renting a server or something like that, you will actually have to go and tell net into the server in order to be able to configure it. And um, I would probably use the, the port value at default so you don't have to worry about getting in or not being able to get in and then um, making sure it's enabled and then the password for being able to tell that in. Um, the EAC active is the anti-cheating stuff. Um, in order for clients to be able to use it, they have to enable it themselves. Um, since I'm running just my own thing, I'm not really about worried about cheaters. So I have this off, but it's something to probably enable, though it may make issues with uh, clients having to enable it as well in order to be able to play. Um, here is the default directory for your saves. Um, if we navigate over to uh, Imperium Dedicated Saver, you notice there's a section called Saves, Games, and this is where all of your save games are for your dedicated server. Um, also in the Save section, I had a lot of people ask me how to do how to make themselves an admin. While they're in here, you have an admin config example. Go over to Edit, and in here it tells you um, your scene ID 64 is and the permission sets. And up top it says three is a game master, six is a moderator, and nine is an admin. Other values aren't allowed, which probably means you'll crash things if they are invalid values. Um, to find your Steam ID number or the Steam ID number of the person you're trying to give special rights to, you would just look up their thing at this thing with their, um, you click on there, you can look them up in Steam and it'll have their ID number in there, is the short of it. Um, so like if I click on this link, we go and I'll pull open my browser and so I could put over here put in like Whipray and it should look me up if I allow the script so we look me up and see it has my Steam ID number and all that stuff and you want this number right here in order if you're trying to set somebody up as um, uh, whatchamacallit, as someone who's like an admin or a moderator in your server but that admin config example is located in the dedicated server saves section and you want to have an actual um, admin config dot yaml as well you you just get rid of that example bit and it should recognize that in um, so going back to where we were <clears throat> um, which was over on this guy so that's save directory um, restrict allowed bluetooth sizes so if you want to make sure people don't crash your server or make op things um, you can um, change how the blueprint factory works either for small things big things large, massive things or just no things um restrict blueprint types so you can completely turn off the blueprint system stock blueprints or all blueprints kind of goes in the last one i left it at all because tornath likes to make things in his off time and why would i want to deny tornath um next up is the actual game configuration section 
Um, this is where you can set the name of the game save. So in my case, alpha four run, uh, run one, which when we go over to this guy in our save section, you've got it right there. And that's where all your save stuff is on. Um, game mode, survival, or creative, pretty self-explanatory, creative, you know, you build stuff, survival, things try to kill you while you build stuff. Seed is the random generation of seed. Um, that just determines what things are randomly done up as. Um, next, we go over to decay time. If they don't have a core and they're under a certain threshold of blocks, after that amount of time, it's gone. Um, it's two hours real time is so in like two days in game, anything that doesn't have a core gets rid of. It's a good way to clean up servers, especially if you're running a busy one, but it's, you know, not a huge deal generally if you're keeping on top of things. Wipe times, um, if no one ever visits anything at all, after a certain number of time, it just wipes it. And again, all these times are given in real time hours, and one hour real time is approximately 24 hours a game. So one game day is one hour. Um, protection time is time which structures are offline protected. They can't be hurt, 48. Um, max number of structures, uh, the limit is 255. Um, it's mostly a performance thing. I leave it at 200. I really haven't run into any issues, but then again, it's only me, Tornath, and a couple of guests and stuff like that. Anti-grief distance. Um, by default, I think this is like 10 or 20 meters. Um, I put it down to zero, zero because I, you, when we build things next to each other, we don't want to necessarily be, keep them super duper far apart. Um, this is entirely up to what you would be comfortable with, um, with regards to, um, putting people's things up and not having to worry about, you know, people being like right up on top of each other in bases. Um, Anti-grief zone, whether it applies in PvP, PvE, or all. Um, same thing for ores. In addition to player, uh, in addition to not being able to build close enough to players, you can also have it for resources too, so people can't just, you know, put their base on top of a resource node to prevent everyone else from getting it. Um, I put that as zero as well because it's just me and Tornath typically, and it's not that big of a deal for us to um, just, you know, pop up shop right next to a resource node. Uh, trading, global virtu uh, virtual, um, so either you enable it or you don't. Um, it lets people trade, buy, sell, all that stuff. Uh, enable blocks block count, um, enables the maximum number of blocks on an object that it can have. Um, it's usually some obscene number. I've had a couple viewers tell me some like six figure numbers. I haven't personally tested it, but if you want to cap it so people don't crash your server, this is the place to do it. Uh, the final portion is the difficulty settings. Um, here we'll have the amount of stuff that's in the escape pod, easy, medium, hard, uh, the difficulty of player progression, how if you can speed it up, slow it down, the amount of ore on a planet, uh, or the different amount of ore on a planet, or yeah, average, sorry, I'm misreading. Um, but yeah, uh, for this case, in the game I've been playing, you're looking at between five, about 500 to 1,200 ore per deposit tops. And then with few deposits, you're looking at maybe one or two deposits per planet. It's very slim pickings. Uh, normal is usually what it is, like three to four, and the deposits are like between 1,500 and 2,500, give or take. Um, difficulty of drone base attacks is how hard drones are and how often they come. Uh, drone presence, you know, number of drones on the planet. Enemy spawn rate, normal is still pretty quick. Uh, if you want to be absolutely insane, high. If you want to slow it down, low. Um, difficulty of the attack strengths, um, I've noticed with on hard, I'm getting hit with a lot more exotic alien species right off the bat, as opposed to just the generic grunts with some, da with some dogs. I'm like getting hit with assassins and stuff when they drop stuff off on transports. So if you want to have a really harsh response, putting the strength on hard would be good. Uh, def uh default constructor craft time. If you don't want to sit around and wait a while, you can change how that crafts things and the blueprint production time. Um, same thing with that one, though even with faster, it still takes a very long time. I think Tornath's thing, when we built his Green Goblin Mark 2 or 3, it's maybe three to 4,000 blocks, and before we fed it 10 tons of materials, it was looking at like four hours to build. That was on fastest. So, um, there is that. But that is a dedicated .yaml file. And so, uh, once you've configured all that, and you make note of, you have to copy that little bit right there, and put it into, let's go back over here. So we have Imperium dedicated right here, this batch file. We go to edit with Notepad++. And in here, you're gonna make sure you put in the dash dedicated and then telling it the what configuration file to look at. Um, otherwise, it's not gonna know what configuration file to use and then you're not gonna be able to use any of your settings that you just took all the effort to set up. All right, so that is involved. That is the process for getting your dedicated server thing, your configuration file set up, and getting the um, 
the dedicated command batch file setup. Now, the key caveat in this one is, again, you cannot actually launch it directly through the batch file like you used to be able to. It just errors out every time I've had. It may not be an issue in Windows 7. I'm running Windows 10, so if someone wants to test that for me and comment in the video, I can, leave the, I can update the description in the comments or put an annotation somewhere in the video. Um, what you have to do now, unfortunately, is you have to go to Empyrean, Galactic Survival Dedicated Server, and then play game. And then it launches it. And, come on. Give it a second. Oh, there it is. And in a couple seconds, it should have the save and quit option pop up. And then you'll be able to log into it uh, once it's up the rest of the way. And it does take a few seconds because it has more start the game up. Um, yep, there it is right there. And so now what we can do is um, on Steam, we actually go to the actual game client and launch that. And uh, once that comes up, uh, we'll be able to see what it looks like. Yeah, we're at version 4.2. Uh, we'll cut right back to this in just a tick because it's it's being really slow to load wait for the program respond here it goes i have been noticing it's been just a little bit slower to load in sometimes All right, so we're just going to go over to multiplayer and my server's right there at the top. So we're gonna go ahead and just connect. And once it's in, we should be a-okay. Here it goes. Um, but yeah, that's mostly it on how to set up your dedicated server for Empyrean. Um, as I've mentioned in previous comments before, um, the YAML file is a very finicky beast, and if it is not perfectly spaced out, it will error out and it will cause the dedicated server program to crash. I've had that happen quite a bit. And uh, another thing to keep in mind is uh, if you're having networking issues, be sure to have... Um, your firewall ports and stuff like that, allowing Empyrean through, make sure Windows firewall isn't blocking Empyrean. And you also may have to set up, excuse me, port forwarding on your router because um, that is a thing that happens very frequently. I had to turn off um, my uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, certain firewall features in order for this to get to work right so other people can connect to it. So that's usually a thing. Um, if you don't want to go through those normal things, something that you can normally do is uh, get like uh, VPNs or like just fake networks like uh, logging in Hamachi and stuff like that. Um, those usually do the trick as well. Or if you're running on just a local area network, people can just connect, connect into your IP address on the local area network and that usually works pretty well too. Um, if there are any other comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll be glad to answer them. I usually try to keep things in support and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and toodaloo. Bye.